Dorothy opens the dinner pail. Tick tock, said Dorothy. The first thing to be done is to find a way for us to escape from these rocks. The wheelers are down below, you know, and threaten to kill us. There is no reason to be afraid of the wheelers, said Tick tock, the words coming more slowly than before. Why not? she asked. Because they are a g g g g g g He gave a sort of gurgle and stopped short, waving his hands frantically, until suddenly he became motionless with one arm in the air and the other held stiffly before him with all the copper fingers of the hand spread out like a fan. Dear me, said Dorothy in a frightened tone, what can the matter be? He's run down, I suppose, said the hen calmly. You couldn't have wound him up very tight. I didn't know how much to wind him, replied the girl. But I'll try to do better next time. She ran around the copper man to take the key from the peg at the back of his neck, but it was not there. It's gone, cried Dorothy in dismay. What's gone? asked Belina. The key. It probably fell off when he made that low bow to you, returned the hen. Look around and see if you cannot find it again. Dorothy looked, and the hen helped her, and by and by, the girl discovered the clock key, which had fallen into a crack of the rock. At once she wound up Tick Tock's voice, taking care to give the key as many turns as it would go around. She found this quite a task, as you may imagine, if you have ever tried to wind a clock. But the machine man's first words were to assure Dorothy that he would now run for at least twenty-four hours. You did not wind me up much at first, he calmly said, and I told you that long story about King Evoldo, so it is no wonder that I ran down. She next rewound the action clockwork, and then Belina advised her to carry the key to Tick Tock in her pocket so it would not get lost again. And now, said Dorothy when all this was accomplished, tell me what you were going to say about the wheelers. Why, they are nothing to be frightened at, said the machine. They try to make folks believe that they are very terrible. But as a matter of fact, the wheelers are harmless enough to anyone that dares to fight them. They might try to hurt a little girl like you, perhaps, because they are very mischievous. But if I had a club, they would run away as soon as they saw me. Haven't you a club? asked Dorothy. No, said Tick Tock. And you won't find such a thing among these rocks either, declared the yellow hen. Then what shall we do? asked the girl. Wind up my think works tightly, and I will try to think of some other plan, said Tick Tock. So Dorothy rewound his thought machinery, and while he was thinking, she decided to eat her dinner. Belina was already pecking away at the cracks in the rocks to find something to eat, so Dorothy sat down and opened her tin dinner pail. In the cover, she found a small tank that was full of very nice lemonade. It was covered by a cup, which might also, when removed, be used to drink the lemonade from. Within the pail were three slices of turkey, two slices of cold tongue, some lobster salad, four slices of bread and butter, a small custard pie, an orange, and nine large strawberries and some nuts and raisins. Singularly enough, the nuts in this dinner pail grew already cracked so that Dorothy had no trouble in picking out their meats to eat. She spread the feast upon the rock beside her and began her dinner, first offering some of it to Tick Tock, who declined because, as he said, he was merely a machine. Afterward, she offered to share with Belina, but the hen murmured something about dead things and said she preferred her bugs and ants. Do the lunchbox trees and the dinner pail trees belong to the wheelers? The child asked Tick Tock while engaged in eating her meal. Of course not, he answered. They belong to the royal family of Ev. Only, of course, there is no royal family just now because King Evaldo jumped into the sea and his wife and ten children have been transformed by the Gnome King. So there is no one to rule the land of Ev that I can think of. Perhaps it is for this reason that the wheelers claim the trees for their own and pick the luncheons and dinners to eat themselves. But they belong to the king, and you will find the royal E stamped upon the bottom of every dinner pail. Dorothy turned the pail over and at once discovered the royal mark upon it as Tick Tock had said. Are the wheelers the only folks living in the land of Ev? 
inquired the girl. No, they only inhabit a small portion of it just back of the woods, replied the machine. But they have always been mischievous and impertinent, and my old master, King Evaldo, used to carry a whip with him when he walked out to keep the creatures in order. When I was first made, the wheelers tried to run over me and butt me with their heads, but they soon found I was built of too solid a material for them to injure. You seem very durable, said Dorothy. Who made you? The firm of Smith and Tinker in the town of Evna, where the royal palace stands, answered Tick-Tock. Did they make many of you? asked the child. No, I am the only automatic mechanical man they ever completed, he replied. They were very wonderful inventors, were my makers, and quite artistic in all they did. I am sure of that, said Dorothy. Do they live in the town of Evna now? They are both gone, replied the machine. Mr. Smith was an artist as well as an inventor, and he painted a picture of a river which was so natural that, as he was reaching across it to paint some flowers on the opposite bank, he fell into the water and was drowned. Oh, I'm sorry for that, exclaimed the little girl. Mr. Tinker, continued Tick-Tock, made a ladder so tall that he could rest the end of it against the moon while he stood on the highest rung and picked the little stars to set in the points of the king's crown. But when he got to the moon, Mr. Tinker found it such a lovely place that he decided to live there, so he pulled up the ladder after him and we have never seen him since. He must have been a great loss to this country, said Dorothy, who was by this time eating her custard pie. He was, acknowledged Tick-Tock. Also, he is a great loss to me, for if I should get out of order, I do not know of anyone able to repair me, because I am so complicated. You have no idea how full of machinery I am. I can imagine it, said Dorothy readily. And now, continued the machine, I must stop talking and begin thinking again of a way to escape from this rock. So he turned halfway around in order to think without being disturbed. The best thinker I ever know, said Dorothy to the yellow hen, was a scarecrow. Nonsense, snapped Bellina. It is true, declared Dorothy. I met him in the land of Oz, and he traveled with me to the city of the great wizard of Oz so as to get some brains, for his head was only stuffed with straw. But it seemed to me that he thought just as well before he got his brains as he did afterward. Do you expect me to believe all that rubbish about the land of Oz? inquired Bellina, who seemed a little cross, perhaps because bugs were scarce. What rubbish? asked the child, who was now finishing her nuts and raisins. Why, your impossible stories about animals that can talk and a tin woodman who is alive and a scarecrow who can think. They are all there, said Dorothy, for I have seen them. I don't believe it, cried the hen with a toss of her head. That's cause you're so ignorant, replied the girl, who was a little offended at her best at her friend Bellina's speech. In the land of Oz, remarked Tick Tock, turning toward them, anything is possible, for it is a wonderful fairy country. There, Bellina, what did I say? cried Dorothy, and then she turned to the machine and asked in an eager tone, Do you know the land of Oz, Tick-Tock? No, but I have heard about it, said the copper man, for it is only separated from this land of Ev by a broad desert. Dorothy clapped her hands together delightedly. I'm glad of that, she exclaimed. It makes me quite happy to be so near my old friends. The scarecrow I told you of, Bellina, is the king of the land of Oz. Pardon me, he is not the king now, said Tick-Tock. He was when I left there, declared Dorothy. I know, said Tick-Tock, but there was a revolution in the land of Oz, and the scarecrow was deposed by a soldier woman named General Ginger. And then Ginger was deposed by a little girl named Ozma, who was the rightful heir to the throne, and now rules the land under the title of Ozma of Oz. 
That is news to me, said Dorothy thoughtfully. But I suppose lots of things have happened since I left the land of Oz. I wonder what has become of the scarecrow and of the tin woodman and the cowardly lion. And I wonder who this girl Ozma is, for I never heard of her before. But Tick Tock did not reply to this. He had turned around again to resume his thinking. Dorothy packed the rest of the food back into the pail so as not to be wasteful of good things, and the yellow hen forgot her dignity far enough to pick up all of the scattered crumbs which she ate rather greedily, although she had so lately pretended to despise the things that Dorothy preferred as food. By this time, Tick-Tock approached them with his stiff bow. "'Be kind enough to follow me,' he said, "'and I will lead you away from here to the town of Evna, where you will be more comfortable, and also I will protect you from the wheelers.' "'All right,' answered Dorothy promptly. "'I'm ready!'